Hello, some of you might remember that I started out in a different set. Well, that building was owned by a good friend of mine by the name of Zot. Zot was one of five Scots in class when he was growing up, and so the nickname stuck. Also, Zot was part of a group called the SCA, and he considered himself a bit of a local authority on the art of boffer making. Now, a boffer is a cushioned sword that you use for practice fighting while wearing plain clothes, and it could be considered the grandfather of LARPing weapons. One of the things that Zot wanted to do was to make a series of videos on the proper methods and safety for making boffer weapons. We only ever got two of those videos recorded before he passed away on November 1st of 2018. And since today is the one year anniversary, I wanted to release that first video. Welcome to Odin Makes. My name's Scott. I'm replacing Odin this evening. Actually, I've eaten Odin, taken his power, and his show. He'll be back soon enough though. He's working on a special project that I'm sure he'll tell you about over on his Patreon. Tonight we're making a very simple boffer. A boffer is basically a stick. You can still hurt yourself playing with boffers. And when you do, don't blame me. But I'm gonna show you how to minimize that risk to the best of my ability this evening. We're gonna use a Schedule 40 3 quarter inch PVC. This is good because it breaks slightly before your bones do in many cases and it's not too flexible. If you get things that are flexible, you get this whip action, that's not comfortable. We're gonna cut this to 30 inches. The biggest safety key I can give you, put a safety cap on all exposed ends. The worst injury I've ever seen in boffer weapons was somebody didn't put a safety cap on their hilt. They were fighting and they pulled away and gouged a great big inch size hole right out of their hand right here. It was a bloody mess. Make sure you glue it on, that's what we're gonna do now. But first, sometimes there'll be just a little bit of flash. There's some right there, you can feel that. What'll happen, if you leave that on there, when this is inside the foam, it will cut the foam and pop it right at that critical juncture on the tip. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna round off that flashing. That makes all the difference in the world. This will save you hours of maintenance. Do it. Since we have a simple buffer, we don't have any complex pieces, we just have to glue the two end caps on. Make sure I get the one that is sanded after that speech. So I'm just gonna do a little bit in the caps, and then a little bit around the end, and then you just stick it on and then you just wait for the glue to dry, or you magically have one that you did earlier. Like that. With that done, let's proceed to padding. Padding's an important part of a boffer. Without it, it really is just a stick. This is just the three quarter inch PVC foam. If you look carefully, you'll notice there's this line so that you can slip this over pipes. What we're gonna do is we don't want that to split open as we slide it over, because it's easier in the long run. We put a single piece of duct tape with that line just centered. So we're gonna cut it a little bit proud. That's about two and a half inches, and that's about right. 30 inches. We're gonna do, we're gonna do an eight inch handle on that. That's big enough even for my paws. All right. We just, the ends aren't supposed to go through this, and that's why we put the duct tape on. Otherwise, this would rip right open. And you can tell where the end is. We're not quite there. There we go. So what we have here is your standard vinyl electric tape. And it has this property where it's stretchy. So what I'm doing is I'm stretching this pretty tight. And I'm making a spiral I'm gonna do this one more time, a little bit higher up. And then as I spiral in, I will stretch it tighter. And I wanna do a little bit on this itself. 
and then a little bit back on the foam. That should be good. Notice how we have, if you look at it in profile, kind of a cone now. And this is really secure. You know, that's not going anywhere. We're gonna put a thrusting tip on this one so you can stab them as well as smack them. And what we do first is we find where tip ends. And we're gonna do a similar thing, but not as much. We're gonna do just a little bit of a stretch and we're gonna do just about two thicknesses of tape. Try not to compact that too much because we still want that to be squishy because that's on the striking surface. But if we don't do that, this will push all the way down here when you thrust. And what'll happen is there's enough give that this hard end can come popping through. And that's uncomfortable. We're gonna use some of Odin's foam that's just scrap here. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna rip off pieces. This is just to fill up the tip so that it doesn't flop around too much because you don't want it to bend to the side. If it bends to the side, you hit the edge of, of the PVC and that's not comfortable. So we're just gonna pack that full of this closed cell foam. Then we're gonna do a little bit more tape magic. We wanna compress this, but not all the way. We're gonna start with a little bit of a cross. To here. And you see, I just pull that in a little bit so that I don't have a lopsided dip. Because I'm told that can be uncomfortable too. We're gonna wrap the tip even less than the other bit, wanting to give it a little bit of reinforcement. With a little bit of use, that'll soften up, but it's not, the important part is, as you press on it, it's not folding. If it folds, you have an issue there. We're gonna go over that with a little bit of duct tape. A little bit below where we started there. Just Part of the art of making a really good bopper is not overdoing, I repeat, not overdoing the duct tape. You need a little bit for support there, but I've seen people who will go and spiral wrap this, not necessary. You wanna keep it as light as possible. Uh, we will do just a little bit more here at the base of the tip. And that should be that. And now we just wanna coat it with a single layer of duct tape. Just overlap it, maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe even a little bit less. Just for good measure, let me give it a little bit of duct tape here too. Again, don't get too carried away with duct tape. It'll make your buffer heavy and it'll destroy the value of the padding. That's actually a little stingy. One last thing I wanna do to this, this is good as it is. We're gonna cut three inches and we're just gonna really quickly, and it makes a little bit of a pommel. This is not a striking surface. This is just a little bumper. You know what? I think mine has ears today. I'm just gonna wrap the whole thing because electrical tape is not that expensive. The last thing I'm gonna do is mark my cutting edge. Secure that down. And there you have it. So yeah, that's a buffer. Yep, it's a buffer. Still a buffer. There are a lot of ways to make a boffer, and I hope to show you a few more. But for today, that's how Zot makes. Welcome to Odin Makes. I'm the evil Odin.
You can tell because I have a goatee and I come from a much darker place. I'm the executive production assistant for Odin Makes. <laughs> I've eaten Odin and assumed his power and his show. Just temporarily. He'll be back. <laughs> did I mention that Odin works in a magical studio? I just, yeah. I did the same thing you do. I, I paused and I'm like, uh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I get it. It's all right. You understand. I know you do. Actually, he's here. He's running the cameras, but he's not here. <laughs> we good? Is, is it, did we do it? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Anything else you want or need while we're here? Um, Within reason. Uh, Thank you for the shop, wife, Odin. <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I think that's as much, I think it's equal parts nerves as temperature. Because the fan's blowing right on me, it feels great.